closed mouth doesn't get fed. I got this from Dr. John Waggle, who was on TSP 7D. People can't help you out with your goals if they don't know what your goals are. And I have three examples of where I was able to maximize my time at Truman. I was able to basically get three opportunities my junior and my senior year to help get a lot more reps. And that's where a closed mouth doesn't get fed, where I just communicated what I wanted to do and I wanted to accomplish. And then I was able to kind of make stuff happen. Was I super fortunate that a lot of this stuff played out? Yes. But the first example, the first action step for you would be to talk with your advisors. Welcome to the Talking Shop Podcast, where I'm going to share stories, lessons, experiences, and sports performance and professional development. I'm joined by my dude, Nick Stone. How are you doing today? Great. How about you? Good, good. So we're here with a little bit different of an episode where it's basically recording a live consulting call, if that's what we want to call it. So Nick was an intern at TC Boost this last summer where I coach. That's where I met him. He is at Loris College right now, finishing up his or starting and finishing his senior year. And he's also interning with the strength and conditioning department there as well. And Nick was actually one of the four original consulting calls that I did for just young professionals in sports performance, uh, helping develop their careers. And he had a, another question about how to maximize his time at school. And I asked him, hey, can we record it? You know, I, I know that there's a lot of other people in your situation, so it'll be a win-win to, uh, to help you out, but also to share this, this kind of conversation back and forth uh, with, with everyone else. So um, if there's anything about your background that I missed, or if you could just give a little bit more context to, to um, the question you asked me or kind of what you just want to get out of this call. I mean, I've been told a lot of different things by a lot of different people of what I should do. And I've never really had any direction here in high school, like the steps to get to the position I want to be, which is a head college training and conditioning coach. So I feel like this talk would benefit me in that way since you kind of went through like that at Truman State working with the baseball team and then at TCU getting that GA, even though it wasn't like in the strength and conditioning, it was more like the science part. Mm-hmm. I still feel like this talk could greatly benefit me in that way. Yeah, so so in general it goes or how it traditionally goes. And college is different than um, than pro and then private and all this kind of stuff. But basically like our our chat, the original consultant call that we had was uh, crush your senior year, crush your CSCS, and then try to get a graduate assistantship or an internship that turns into a graduate assistantship. And hopefully that'll lead to, that'll lead to um, an assistant role. But uh, I think the, and that I can go more on that topic if, if people want, but that's generally the, the flow and to kind of gear your job search. If you know where you want to go to the end destination, then we kind of work backwards, right? So to be a head SNC coach, you have to be an assistant strength coach, uh, probably a GA or an intern, and then kind of where you are now. So if we know that that's the flow, then you have a whole year to research what master's program you want to do. But knowing that you want to get a GA and knowing that you want to get a strength and conditioning GA, that's going to completely like narrow down your search, which I think is super beneficial. But for this chat, you asked me basically how to get the most out of your time at school. So how to get the most reps, the coaching reps, all, you know, how to maximize your experience. Like you're stuck at school. How do you maximize? You know? So uh, I have a few experiences because I think I did a pretty decent job of that at my undergrad. Um, And there's two things, two kind of phrases, I guess, that I think will portray this well. And the first one is just, reps 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 like as cliche as that sounds like you get better at coaching by actually coaching you can read all the textbooks and do all this stuff but you can't simulate interacting with an athlete uh, making changes on the fly experimenting and things like that so i think you're definitely in the right spot kind of figuring out how do you get more reps you know but um, and you're definitely in the right spot, you know, asking someone who's, I don't have all the answers, you know, I, I never will, but probably more than, than the average person, um, at least for someone kind of in your shoes. And the second one is a closed mouth doesn't get fed. 
I got this from Dr. John Waggle, who was on TSP 7D. I think this will be 72. And people can't help you out with your goals if they don't know what your goals are. And I have three examples of where I was able to maximize my time at Truman, basically just in my last two years, because I did my internship at TC Boost in between my sophomore and my junior year. So I was able to basically get three opportunities, my junior and my senior year to help get a lot more reps. And that's where a closed mouth doesn't get fed, where I just communicated what I wanted to do and I wanted to accomplish. And then I was able to kind of make stuff happen. Was I super fortunate that a lot of this stuff played out? Yes. But the first example um, or first action step for you would be to talk with your advisors because they are the experts at, at Loris, right? Like that's what they do um, because they are going to know things that are official uh, and they're going to have ideas that are unofficial as well. And I'm gonna give examples of something official and something unofficial. So an official example, my advisor said, hey, uh, you can, or if you were interested in training my son, he's a high school track athlete, you can collect data before and after and then present at the student research conference. I know that your internship was based on speed. I think that would be a win-win for me, for my son and for you. And if you do this, if you present at this research conference, then you qualify for departmental honors, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So he was looking out for me, but he knew my goals and he kind of put that out there. Um, so I was able to train uh, his son and then his son and his friend who actually went on to run D1 track. So that was pretty cool uh, just to work with um, just two, two athletes. So something uh, unofficial, or that was my unofficial one, even though it turned into being official. but you know, your, your advisor knows everyone else in the, in the department. They probably know how old their kids are. They probably know what sports they play. So communicating with your advisor, Hey, if you know anyone that would be interested in receiving speed and agility coaching, or just in general, you know, if basically like not being a personal trainer, but if they were looking for some sort of sports specific training, this is my experience at TC boost. I had this last summer and then something official that my uh, advisor brought up was uh, basically at every school, there's like that one credit or one hour fitness class that everyone has to take at least one semester. And that was all taught by students and you got to create your own curriculum. So I created a class called need for speed. It was twice a week for 50 minutes and I had 12, 13 people. And we just had like, we had like a three basketball court gym and I just had one of the basketball courts. I brought my own cones and basically I was in charge of taking them through uh, two hours a week of speed training, you know, and then obviously like having reflections and stuff like that to make it more course oriented. And that was interesting because I got a wide variety of, of students and athletic abilities and backgrounds and stuff like that. So that was something more official. We had and, that uh, same class here, but it was like a one-on-one -on -one instead of a group. Really? Yeah. And then sadly, I got like a powerlifting guy for my client. So that was pretty cool. Cause that's like the realm I'm interested in and know a decent amount about, but like then COVID hit. So it just ruined everything. And yeah. it was like at home training, but it was a, it was a good experience to kind of get that programming, like kind of experience in that. And then just like kind of coaching him on like what he can and can't do and like seeing the flaws in his form and all of that. So I got a decent amount of reps there and that was a pretty good experience. And then, so I, I guess I'll, I'll stop ranting, kind of hear your thoughts. So when I was talking about communicating with my advisor, um, do you, do you have an advisor at school or are you kind of good friends with some of the professors in the, in the department? I have an advisor. Um, I haven't really talked to her except for like classes and stuff like that. I've had her for a couple of classes. Um, I had her for my theory of strength and conditioning class. And so she knows I'm interested in that. She knows I know a decent amount about that. So I can definitely talk with her about mm -hmm. that. She knows what I want to do. Did but you have an internship advisor? That was her. Okay. Yeah. So she's familiar with, with TC Boost and what you, you did this past summer. And, and yeah. like I said, like, I didn't even know that the students taught those classes cause I played baseball. So I didn't have to take one of them. Um, and 
although I knew my advisor, like I didn't know that his son ran high school track, you know? And um, so I think that, that she would definitely be an awesome person to lean on um, as well as, well, I'm going to get to, to baseball and then I'll talk about you interning with the strength and conditioning coach. Uh, so I was on the baseball team and I just sent a message in our group me and I said, Hey guys, I just did this internship at a sports performance facility known for speed and agility. If you guys were interested, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, to train you guys, take you through some speed and agility. Uh, we can do like one night during the week and then one afternoon on the weekend, you know, and I was able to, I was able to get like five, six, six guys for my team uh, during the fall semester. And then in season, you know, kind of, we were playing obviously, uh, but it, it was a win-win. I was able to get more reps and I was able to help improve my teammates performance, you know, so just, and I know that you used to play on the team. So you're, you probably know some of the guys um, or if you know someone else on a different team, just say, Hey, would you mind sending this message to your team group chat? You know, and that's where a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Cause you know, even if you have two basketball players, three baseball guys, um, you know, and then like a little hodgepodge of people like that's still a group, you know, and it's still an opportunity to kind of perfect your craft. And then I like what you mentioned about helping out your friend, because I did that a lot as well, where I had friends that just enjoyed working out in the weight room and just that challenge of, of making a program, getting their feedback, you know, and like, that's the perfect place to experiment, to be honest, you know, like, cause your friends probably aren't going to know the difference between an amazing program and a decent program, but it's somewhere to get reps, you know, it's like, Hey, send me a video and you can try to make it kind of like, like an online client, you know, where it's, you don't train them. You just send them the, the program they, and you chat about it, you know? So there's a lot, a lot of different ways we can get kind of different reps, but it's all about communicating, you know, like how many of your friends know that you would write programs for them without you saying that you would, you know? Um, so I'm going to kind of ask for your, your thoughts before I get on to how you can kind of maximize, uh, with the strength coach, if all that makes sense and, and what your thoughts are. My thoughts on how to maximize it with the strength coach. Uh, on, on kind of the stuff with the advisor, with reaching out to some of the athletes, just your friends. Oh, yeah. I talked to, uh, the strength coach about the speed program. So it'd be like, it would be like an actual, like, it wouldn't be just like me getting together with the team. It'd be like the coaches know about it and everything. I'd be presenting it to them. Um, so the strength coach knows about it. He's all in. He said he would help me on it. I'm talking with the baseball coach this week and presenting him with the program that I've kind of built, mm -hmm. explaining how it can help him and benefit the team. Um, I have been, I've been doing it, getting some like practice runs with my roommates I've been coaching them out on the field a couple times so far on their like speed mechanics and some drills. Um, so that's been good practice. And then like the weight room, I've coached my two friends. We lifted all together um, over the summer. So that was good kind of practice for the internship I'm doing now with the strength coach. Just kind of getting reps on coaching people with the correct form, maybe some programming stuff. So and then some examples. So I guess I'll give kind of some potential action steps for uh, kind of the strength coach that you're interning for specifically. And I gave this example for one of the uh, other four people that I had the consulting call with where he, he was getting decent coaching reps, but he didn't get a lot of programming experience. And cause the, the guy he was under was comfortable with him coaching, but not comfortable with him programming. And, and I told him, well, ask him if you could write mock programs and then just to get his feedback on it. You know, you don't have to be able to run the whole program just to practice going through that process. Um, so if you want more programming experience, say, hey, you know, like, can we chat in two weeks? I'm going to have a program for the baseball, basketball, and volleyball team. And then we'll kind of just go through it, your thoughts. And then the next two weeks, it's going to be track, cross country, and, um, and some other sport, you know, and and so that's a way to get more reps without necessarily having access to athletes. Uh, we're just going through that process of being thoughtful and planning for however many weeks at a time, you know, and you can look up their schedule online and like say, Hey, here's the beginning of their season, the end of their season. This is how many weeks, you know, so 
you, you kind of have, to, it, it's tough to kind of create some stuff on your own and being a little bit outside the box. Um, but that's one way to get coaching experience, but to make it a, an actual rep of getting better by getting that feedback from uh, the strength coach that you're working under. Um, so that's a way to get programming experience. And then the coaching experience, like I said, chatting with advisors, chatting with, um, with your friends and different things like that. And then one other thing that I wrote down was, was potentially reaching out to people within the area, you know, however far you feel comfortable driving 30 minutes, hour, hour and a half, two hours to not to go and shake some hands. So if it's a little bit farther, probably not going to be going there every weekend. Right. But it's an opportunity to go shake some hands for you to get your name out there. And that's going to benefit you in the long run and potentially securing a graduate assistantship because they might get all these applications on the desk, right? But if they know you, you went and said, hello, you showed that you're professional, right? They're going to be more comfortable with you as opposed to just some random person that came across their desk. Um, but if it's, if, if it's somewhere a little bit closer, you know, like let's say you went to Northwestern, Northwestern's like 20 minutes away from TC Boost, you know? So you would send it, let's say you went to Northwestern, send an email to TC Boost and say, hey, um, I'm, I'm a senior, I'm, I'm loving this whole coaching field and job. Um, I would love just to, to shadow and see what you guys were about on Saturdays. You know, like, is that, is that an option? You know, and not you don't have to say, hey, I wanna do X, or you can just phrase it however you wanna phrase it. But that's just an example of, of your communicating your goals and what you want to accomplish to the appropriate people. So it's just brainstorming. What are these different people that I can talk to advisors, friends, sport coaches, athlete, friends, facilities in the area, college people within two hour drive, et cetera, et cetera. And then like, what's the most appropriate way to um, utilize those connections to get the most reps if I had to try to sum it up. So um, kind of how does that sound before I keep rambling again? I guess that would be the second step after like talking to him on the phone is actually going in person. Mm -hmm. That's just, I, that's going to be hard with all the COVID stuff going yeah. on. I already talked to the, I've talked to the Platteville coach about it. Um, and we talked on the phone. It was a good conversation. And he's like, yeah, once all this COVID stuff clears up, then maybe we could set something up in person. You can come shadow for a day. Mm -hmm. But like with COVID, that's going to be hard to do at a lot of places. Yeah. Especially being like an outsider, not from that actual school. Yeah, definitely. But I'm, I definitely try to do that with some of the coaches I've talked to. Mm -hmm. So and that might be more of like a spring semester thing as well. Maybe like once hopefully COVID clears up by then. Mm -hmm. So. And I love that you said it's probably a spring semester thing because it probably is. But knowing that you have that end goal in mind, just how I'm doing with my networking calls that I'm doing, trying to get a full-time job in college or pro sports, I have an Excel sheet, who, who they are, where they're at, last time we chatted, and then what we chatted about, you know? So if you have a list of four coaches that are all within a two-hour drive, but they all said... Uh, yeah, it's kind of tough with all the stuff going on, right? So imagine if you email them once in, you know, August when school first started. You email them in October just to ask them how their how the first half of their semester, right? You email them during fall break. How is the first half of your semester with your athletes? Just to kind of stay in their mind. And then you email them, happy Thanksgiving, you know. Um, I was wondering if there was any progress kind of if I could, if I could stop and shake your hand, stop by and shake your hand in January, you know? So it's different if you, if you reach out once and then like you wait six months to do it again, as opposed to staying professionally in their mind, respecting that they have their space, you know, but um, it's, you can't be hitting up, hitting them up every two weeks, but also like hitting them up once a year probably isn't, the most effective either, you know? So if you have this end goal in mind, and also it kind of keeps, it keeps them in the back of, it keeps you in the back of their mind, if that makes sense. Um, so just like, as weird as it sounds like scheduling it out, you know, I'm gonna take the first week of September, send all my emails, 
the people that respond, I'll write down that they responded. The ones that don't, I'll say that they didn't respond. And then I'll email them in fall break. The ones that responded, I'll like continue the convo. The people that didn't respond, I'll just send them a little email. Hey, I was wondering if my first email got lost in the shuffle. Um, I'd, I'd love to come shake your hand one day, you know, and kind of like periodizing your, uh, your communication with these schools. So if that example makes sense. Yeah, if, if you just kind of want to share your, your thoughts on kind of that, this part of the convo. Well, I definitely, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, as Steve said, it was a good idea to just like follow up with them, mm-hmm. keep in contact with them. I didn't really know what was a good way to keep in contact with them over the course of time, but that sounds like a really good way. I'm just kind of asking what, how it's been going with them with their training and their thoughts on everything going on. Mm-hmm. So I'll definitely look into doing that. Yeah. And then especially I think it goes along with the first conversation we had with them. Cause I've been asking them about their training and philosophies and all that stuff. So following it up a couple months later with how it's been going kind of mm-hmm. goes along with that first conversation. Exactly. And depending on kind of how much they disclose and, and the notes you take, you know, if you know that, their biggest block of the fall just ended a week ago. Say, Hey coach, you know, I I think your block has ended. How'd that go? You know, or like, let's say it's a football strength coach, just a huge win last weekend. Congrats. You know? So by doing a little bit of research and being a little bit more thoughtful, it's, it's going to go a super long way. Um, Those are little things that, you know, you kind of just pick up over time, but are definitely going to be more personable kind of in the long run. Um, And I think that those were all of the notes that I had, but, um, if you could, if, if any other questions kind of came up or if, uh, if you have kind of any other thoughts to share kind of, kind of for the, the listener, if they're in similar shoes like yourself. Um, I guess it's just about, I think my biggest problem is actually talking to people and networking. Um, cause I'm not really, I'm not really a people person, but in this profession, you have to be a people person and you have to get your name out there and talk to people so that's going to be the biggest thing to do um i've already gotten a decent step into that with the help from you guys at tc boost i was just about me continuing that um i'm getting the experience in the weight room this year i got the experience over the summer at tc boost i'm taking my cscs uh this winter and i'm getting my uh USA weightlifting certification as well. Um, So I think just the biggest thing was kind of those steps I needed to take and kind of get like that direction to get in that GA and then that assistant job because I had no idea how to do that. So, but I think I'm on the right track. I think, I think you're definitely in the right track and I think that you're doing the right things. Even just like asking me for my two cents you know, or asking Steve, like, I think, I think our first call was kind of spurred by Steve. Like you just asked Steve, like, Hey, what else can I do? Or, or what are your thoughts? And then, you know, Steve can only help you out. So Steve's my mentor at TC boost and you shout out Steve all summer and Steve can only help you out by communicating that you want help, you know? So our first convo can only happen by you communicating with Steve. Right. And this, this conversation can only happen by you, shooting me a text saying, Hey, I heard you, you did some stuff during your undergrad. I'd love to hear more about it, you know, and, and your comment about being a people person. It's a, it's a, it's, it is a, a people, um, job. Jeez. I, I'm phrase I'm blanking on what that phrase is, but, um, it's not to say that you have to be a people person, but you have to understand when it's your time to, to kind of step outside yourself, still be yourself, but kind of like not, not acting, not faking it, but like, okay, like I'm going to put myself out there and kind of like getting yourself in the headspace of it. Just like, it's just like when you're going out of the bar for, for a big, uh, for a big back squat PR, you know, like you kind of got to psych yourself up. And if it doesn't come as natural to you, like, like you got this, I'm on my road to, to my end goal of being a head SNC coach. So I'm, I'm just going to try, I'm just going to try a little bit harder to be social, you know, kind of getting yourself in that headspace. And, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of fortunate cause I could talk the paint off a wall and I've been doing my podcast for a year. So I'm just more comfortable public speaking 
and just different stuff like that. So just know that like every conversation you have is getting you one step closer, not maybe to a GA ship, but also just you as a professional. You know, if, if you have to go through, you know, 10 colleges shaking hands to get that skill, that phrasing, just, you know, I, I'll say skill again, because everything's a skill. If you have to go through 10 universities to develop that skill of talking with a new coach to kill it with the 11th one, you know, like you have to make it through 10 first. Um, so kind of just not to be all like motivational and stuff, but, you know, acknowledging that you might not be the biggest people person right now, but knowing that it is part of the part of the deal, which you already know. So, you know, you know yourself and you know kind of what is needed of you. So now it's just up to you to kind of put it all together. Um, but yeah, just getting reps and being creative on how to do it. Uh, I, and then a closed mouth doesn't get fed. You know, like people can't help you out unless they, they know where you are and they know where you want to be. Um, so I think that that's everything I had before I just start repeating myself. So if there's anything else, kind of just comments in general or questions, um, I'm opening it up to you. Good. Uh, I think you're muted. It was a good conversation. Uh, definitely know kind of what to do now. Have a little bit more direction. I'm looking forward to following up in a couple months about how things are going again. Uh, just like we're doing now. Um, so I, th I think I'm ready to make some changes like that. I got, I got a job as a bouncer. Um, and I was thinking about it last night about the people person thing. And I think that's going to help a lot too. Cause I actually have to like talk to people and everything and greet people. Mm. So I feel like just being a little more open and out there is going to help with being more open and out there and talking to like athletes and strength coaches. So. And that's a perfect example of there really is value in everything. If you see the value in it. And that's literally like the most low pressure situation. Like people are just coming and going the whole evening. They're not going to re remember if you fumbled your words, if you were a little bit awkward, you know, but like think about just one week of being a bouncer, like how much better at talking to people you're going to be right. If you're intentional about it you know? So I, yes. I think that that was an awesome example. Uh, like I said, of just understanding how everything can help you with your end goal if you make it so. So it's, it's a matter of, I guess, to sum it up of getting reps, 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 being creative and how you do so seeing value in everything. Like I said, even just training your buddies and a closed mouth doesn't get fed, you know, like I don't even know how many people have helped me out on my journey. Right. But for some reason, like I just, once I decide that, okay, this is the person and this is what I want to ask them for, or just bring up, then I just go and do it, you know? So having confidence in yourself that you are a value, right. And having confidence that yes, you do need help, you know? And that's the theme that I've heard from a lot of people is like, there's so many people that have helped me out along the way. And I'm, I'm very excited to, to, um, it's my turn to pay it forward, you know, whenever I reach out to them. So, and this is my, my turn to pay it forward to you right now. So um, th there's a lot of people that are, that are going to help you out along the way, but they can't help you out unless they know where you want to go. So I'm going to stop re repeating myself. This was an awesome call. I look forward to chatting next and best of luck, man. I'm excited to, to hear about what you cook up. All right. Thank you.